Amen. All right. You ready for the word? I am too. Book of Ephesians. Put that first slide up there so I can read it. Woohoo. How to live. How to live an effective Christian life in Christ. That's what we want, amen. I want to be effective. I don't want to be a, a Christian that, that they, when I get to heaven, that God's got to search for me. You know, you know they'll probably have computers. It will be, won't be in a, in a hard copy anymore. He's probably transferred over to computers now. And, you know, and he'll, Ron King. No, he's not in that file. Ron King. Oh, he's not in that file. I want to pop up right away. Amen. I want him to go, oh, Ron King. Oh, Ron King. Ron King is here. That's what I want to have happen when I go to heaven. Amen. When, I, when my time comes and I go, I don't want him to have to, you know, wait a minute. Let's see if you're in this file. Maybe you're in this file. Maybe you're in this file. Maybe you're in this file that you got born again, but you didn't do anything. I'm being mean today, aren't I? See, some of y'all like mean. <laughs> That's bad. Come on. Uh, Book of Ephesians in the title today is, which I have, I'm not doing yet, is walking in love. <laughs> we want to walk in love. How many of you like to be loved? I love to be loved. I love it when Delanda loves on me, you know, when she rubs my head or something, you know, and just pets on me. I love that, you know. I love it when she makes me a good dinner and, you know, she, you know, I love that. She always makes me, everything she makes is good. So I just love when she cooks for me. That's my love language. So um, we're going to read out of Ephesians 5, 1 through 7, walk in love. It's a little rough today in this passage. So hold on to your seats. Just stand with me as we read the word. Ephesians 5, 1 to 7. Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children. You live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us, offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. Let there be no sexual immorality, impurity, or greed among you. Such sins have no place among God's people. Obscene stories, foolish talk, coarse jokes. These are not for you. Instead, let there be thankful. You can be sure that no immoral, impure, or greedy person will inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God. For a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse their sins. For the anger of God will fall on all who disobey him. Don't participate in the things these people do. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that when we leave here today, that we would imitate you. That we would follow in your steps. That, Lord, that in our heart and our mind, we'd be set on not doing the things these people do that you talked about in this passage. But, Lord, I pray for purity of heart and of mind today, that your hand would be upon each one of us. And, Lord, that you'd cover, keep, and protect us today. Let your word be alive in us today in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. You may be seated. All right. You know, my daughter Carly, she just turned 38 last month, and uh, I, I get to go see her again this week to watch a football game because it's homecoming, and my oldest grandson got nominated for homecoming king, so I'm going to pop out there again this week and see them and watch the game and then come home on Saturday again. So, but my daughter Carly, when she was little, she came to me one day because she felt like I worked four jobs. She, you know, she saw that I went to work every day as a, a mold maker. She saw that I worked at the church. And then she would see me in the evening. I would program, write programs for companies. I had two companies I wrote programs for. And I would just 
FedEx the programs to them. And so she felt like I had four jobs when she was growing up. So she came to me one day. She said, Dad, will it be okay if I only work two jobs when I grow up? I'm like, honey, you know, why don't you just marry a man that you don't have to work, you know? <laughs> Do that. And um, so she called me the other day. I think it was Monday. I said, hey, no, what are you doing? You know, it was when she just got off work. She goes, I'm going to my other job. And I'm like, your other job? She goes, yeah, I, I have to work overtime tonight at another company. And I'm like, I said, do you remember when you were a little girl and you only wanted to work two jobs? Well, here you go. <laughs> and, but she has married a man that can take care of her. But, you know, we all like that uh, a little bit bigger house and she needs a bigger house for all them boys. And so she works two jobs now and then. But it just made me think of as I was writing this about imitating our heavenly father, you know, and how your kids will imitate you, how you'll look in the mirror one day and you'll look at your kids and you think, man, you know, and it seems like a lot of times your kids pick up the bad things of you, you know, Carly picked up my good and Delonda's bad. No, <laughs> Delonda don't have no bad, <laughs> but you know, in, in this passage, Paul throws in another therefore. He, you know, and what that therefore means is since we are a new man or a new woman, you know, we have to put away the things, we put away the things that quench the Holy Spirit as we talked about last week. We put on the new man now in Christ. So now we should be intimidating, intimid, not intimidating, imitating, thank you, imitating God. Amen. We should be imitating God. People should look at you and see who? Jesus. Come on, everybody say, Jesus. You guys say, it just like me, I love it. You know, that, that's what we need. We need to imitate Jesus. You know, and, and as I've been teaching for a long time, when I teach, I've taught college, I, I teach in our Bible school here, um, I know that people learn in different ways. You know, I learn differently than, than Delonda does. But one thing I do know, what is seen is a lot easier to catch than what is said. Because what we're better at imitating with what we see people doing. I can say it, but will you imitate what I say or will you imitate what I do? So we're to imitate Christ by what he has said to us, amen? We're to imitate him. And people will see it and it'll cause them to think, well, to stop thinking that all Christians are hypocrites. How many of you have heard that before? Christians are hypocrites. You know, ah, oh, I hear it all the time. It's just like, we're trying. You know, Delana and I were talking yesterday and we're like, the body of Christ has got to get their act together. We got to do better about this. We got to do better in our walk, you know, not, not just new hope, but the body of Christ. We can't keep saying one thing and doing another. We've got to get our act together and start doing what we're saying. We got to start imitating Jesus. Amen. We got to do a better job of imitating him. And that's number one, imitate God. And A, it's up there. In everything you do, say everything. In everything you do, imitate God. Why? Because you are his children. You're his children. You're a child of God. So we should imitate him. In the same way that my daughter imitates me, you need to imitate him. Amen. I need to imitate him. Live a life filled with love. Filled with love. Filled with love. Follow Christ's example how he loved. God loved you, Bobby, so much that he gave everything. He gave his very best. Go all in. Give your very best. I'm not talking about just money. I'm talking about give your time. 
Come and drive if you got time. Don't just say, nah, I don't want to do that. Come and drive. You know, because when you come and you get food, you pick that up and you bring that back, you're feeding our community. And I know that we have fed like as much as 136 families in one week this month, which comes out to around 500 people in one Saturday. In one Saturday. Can you imagine? That, that's what a blessing that New Hope is to our community, that we could feed so many. And that, that would go in your, in your book. When God writes, oh, they fit, he, look at it, they're driving that van. Look at them. Look at them serving that community. Oh, look at Isn't that what it is? Serving the poor. Amen? That's what he'll call, he's called us to do. Follow his example. And then he, because he loves us. Imitate God because he loves us. He loves us, amen. He offered himself as a sacrifice for us. He did his very best. He paid it all for us so that we can have the victory, amen. So that we can have the victory, amen. Be a pleasing aroma to God. Smell good. You know, in the Old Testament, when they, when they gave offerings and they, they lit incense, it, it was a pleasing aroma to God. It smelled good to God. Let your life smell good. Don't be stinky. And I'm not talking about in the natural. I'm talking about spiritually. Don't be stinky. Be that pleasing aroma. But if you're going to imitate God, love is the key to imitating God. You've got to love. And we, we need to learn how to do it good and you know, in our, our world, it can be very hard, be very judgmental. We, we need more unconditional love around us, amen? People need to see that unconditional love. They don't need to see that Christians can be mean or Christians can be hateful. They need to see that Christians are filled with unconditional love, amen? You know, Delonda loves to watch these videos of, of people doing good things for people. You know, uh, what are they called? acts of kindness. She loves to watch that. It'd be hours of YouTube videos of acts of kindness. And that's what God wants you to do, us to do, acts of kindness. Feeding our community, that's an act of kindness, amen? And God's calling us to do the, the acts of kindness. And, and if you just slow down for a minute every day, you'll begin to see where you could do an act of kindness. Will it cost you something? Probably. But when you slow down and you do it, it'll bless you. It'll bless God. You know, God gave it all. Remember, he gave his very best. So imitate God in everything you do. Amen? In everything you do. But verse 3, he, Paul goes back into things that we should not participate in. And he's, he's really into it because of, of the things that he he's talks about today, it takes us out of love. And he's doing his best to make us aware of how to walk in the kingdom. Okay. Paul doesn't want anybody to miss the coming of the Lord. Jesus doesn't want anybody to miss. So Paul has been given the job to talk about some hard things to us. And you know, the last couple of weeks, the things that he's listed that we need to put down or we need to put away, that things that grieve the Holy Spirit. And so today he's talking about imitating God in loving. So, and he's gonna bring up things that that take us out of that love into another area. And he says in verse three, let there be no, no sexual immorality, impurity or greed among you for such people have no place, um, such sins have no place among God's people. Now I'm gonna read it to you out of the New King James version here. But fornication in all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as it is fitting for saints. 
That's what he's, he's telling us. Don't even let it be named among you. Sexual immorality is defined as fornication, which encompasses all acts of sexual immorality. All acts of sexual immorality. I mean, you can talk about adultery. You can talk about homosexuality. You can talk sex outside of marriage. You can talk about uh, pornography. You know, so you, you can't judge one. Well, we shouldn't judge anything, but we should not participate in any of those things. And covetousness identifies the insatiability of human carnality, never able to get enough, never able to get enough. And when Don and I, we lived in China in 2006, and it's like when you get out of the fishbowl, you can see things. So when we were over there in China and looking back to America, we saw the greediness of America, that nobody can ever have enough in America. And he's, he's telling us that's covetousness, never able to get enough. Now, I, I started reading a book called Every Man's Battle. It's a book about how people fall into fornication. Not a fun book, trust me. So, but the enemy's tactics on, us, on people are very subtle. You know, for, for, you know, just in reading this book, for some guys it was finding a pornographic magazine under their dad's bed or something, you know, when they were a kid. Uh, for others it was watching things on TV that opened up things that they'd never thought about or, or ever seen. Um, and these things led to other things which open up the desire inside of them that they had a hard time shutting off, okay? Many people, many people across the board, not just men are addicted to pornography today. There's many people, women, but the average age today, for those of you that got kids, of internet exposure to pornography is 11 years old, the average age. Now the largest consumer of internet pornography is the age group 35 to 49. Why am I talking about these things? Because listen, we gotta get it right. We've gotta put this off because of what it leads to. 15 to 17 year olds having multiple hardcore exposures, 80%. How old are you Moses? How old are you? I can't hear you. 14. 8 to 16 year olds having viewed porn online, 90%. Most while doing homework. 7 to 17 year olds, don't worry, I'm going to get to you adults in a minute. Seven to 17 year olds who have freely given out their home address, 29%. Seven to 17 year olds who freely give out their email address, 14%. Children's character names linked to thousands of porn links, 26, including Pokemon and Action Man, linked to porn. Okay, now let's talk about adults. Why am I gonna keep going? Because we gotta get it out of the church. It's gotta get out of the church. It's gotta get out of the church. Men admitting to accessing pornography at work, 20%. US adults who regularly visit internet pornography sites, 40 million. Promise keeper men who viewed pornography in the last week, 53%. Christians who said pornography is a major problem in their home, 47%. Adults admitting to internet sexual addiction, 10%. The breakdown of male and female visitors to pornography sites, 72% male, 28% women. Paul's telling us that there should not even be a hint of this among us. Believers in Jesus, in the church, 
There should not be a hint of this at all, that we have put off the old man. It should not be a part of our lives at all. Now, listen, I'm not trying to bring condemnation on anybody here today. I don't want to condemn anybody, but I want to bring awareness. And I want to let you know that if I'm talking about you today, there is freedom in Christ. Amen. And, uh, you know, just reading the, this book, you know, they talked about the guilt, the shame that comes with it, how they, they desire to quit and they, they repent on Monday, you know, or on Sunday, and then on Monday they're back at it again it, because it's an addiction. It's just like drugs. It's just like alcohol, you know, pills or whatever. It's, it's an addiction that needs to be delivered from, amen, needs the healing to get away from. Um, we just have to be able to put it off. You know, the world has not made it easy for men or women. Um, the, just watching commercials today, you can really get, get attacked. So how does this relate to walking in love? The fornication of all that makes for tainted love. It leads to things of lust, not love. And this causes problems in marriages and many times leads to divorce. It brings an impurity to the, to the love a man and a woman should have. Impurity to the love that a man and woman should have. It also opens doors to doing other things that we should not talk about on a Sunday morning. I feel like I'm really stretching it just by going into it today. But it's a definite issue in the body of Christ. And, and if we're going to walk in the love of God, we got to get the issue out of us. Amen. And I just want you to know I'm not here to condemn, but I'm here to help. I'd be willing in, to, to do a study with you on this. You know, the, the book that I'm going through, Every Man's Battle, it has a workbook that we could go through that we can work things, work through things and, and allow God to touch those areas of your life, that you be free in the name of Jesus. And you listen, I'm willing to make the time, but you gotta be willing to. First thing, you know, when you go to celebrate recovery, I think it is, Mark, is don't you have to admit you have a problem? First thing you gotta do is you gotta admit that you, there's a problem. And you gotta know that this is a problem. This is a problem that God does not want us to maintain. He said there should not be even a hint of this among us. Amen. It should be gone. So Paul knows the consequences of not dealing with it. Like I said, I'm, I'm not just talking about porn, but sexual immorality, adultery, sex outside of marriage, homosexual, all those things. Anything of impurity that there should not be a hint among us. But these things, Paul knows, these things will keep you from inheriting the kingdom of God. It'll keep you out. Don't let yourself be fooled that you've got a handle on this stuff. Paul, Paul gives a further warning. He said, don't try to excuse these sins. Don't try and make excuses for it that, it, that it's okay, I got a handle on, no, you don't. We don't have a handle on sin. The only thing that gives us a handle over sin is repentance. That we repent, we cry out to God, we get delivered, amen? That's the only way we're gonna get a handle over it is by the power of God working in us. And the enemy of your soul will try to give you all kinds of excuses for these actions. And he'll try to center it on love. He'll create lies in your head to get you to believe that the sin you're doing is okay. No sin is okay. No sin is okay. Amen? It, you know, like I said, I don't like talking about this stuff, but it's in the Word. He took us there. When it's of sexual nature, it's listed as sin against your body. And that's why it, this one is really important that we get down. This is the stuff that brings, it's, now listen, I didn't write it, but it said, this is the stuff that brings the anger of God to the, just those that are disobedient to him. It brings the anger of God. And some people say, I, don't, I just feel like God is judging me. You got to get rid of it. 
We're not to participate in these things at all. We need to clean up our act because the church has not excused the use of such things. Psalms 24, verse 3 and 4, it says, Who may climb the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? Only those whose hands and hearts are pure, who do not worship idols and never tell lies. There's that lie thing again. But people, people think that on these things is having to, like they got to give up something. You give this up to gain God, to gain his purity, to gain his heart. That's what we need to do. For us as believers, Jesus wants us to obtain heaven someday, amen? He wants us all to go to heaven someday. Uh, we want to hear those words, amen? Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into your rest. We want to hear those words. We don't want to hear, listen, your name's not here. I'm sorry, your name's not here. I, I, I've done a search. It, you know, the search engine says, your name's not here. We don't want to hear that. We want to hear, come on, come on down. Woo! The land is here. But not yet. We want our marriages to be pure, not tainted with lust. We want true love. Amen. We want the love of God. First John chapter 4. Verse 18, it says, such love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it's for fear of punishment. And this shows that we have not fully experienced his perfect love. We love each other because he first loved us. Now the love of God casts out all fear, amen? The enemy will use fear so that you don't do something about this in your life. He will tell you, if you tell pastor, he will kick you out of the church. I will not, I will help you. But I don't want you passing it on to somebody else. I don't want you to keep it secret so that we find out one day. Oh my gosh, this guy was laying hands on everybody and everything and we don't want that, amen, you don't want that. Don't let the enemy lie to you that you can't tell anybody. Don't let the enemy grip you to say, I can't tell somebody my sin, you know, because they'll kick me out. You come tell me your sin, I won't kick you out. I will help you. I will expect you to grow. But don't stay the way you are and miss heaven. Don't miss heaven. Don't miss heaven. It's not worth it. The love of God will cast out that fear off that the enemy's tried to put on you that says, I can't talk about this with anybody. I'm telling you right now, you can come talk about it to me. I'm not gonna judge you, I'm gonna help you. The love of God is perfect. It takes fear out so that we can do the right thing so that we inherit the kingdom of God. We want love, not lust. Amen? We don't want to walk in lust. We want to walk in love. We don't want to be tormented by the enemy any longer. We want to walk in love. We want to walk in the joy of the Lord. We want to walk in the purity of heart. We want to walk in the righteousness of God. We don't want to be overcome by fear of what the enemy's got. We don't want to be overcome by this junk that the enemy's sown into our lives. You know, when we were in, in Peru one time, they told me that 95% of the people that have come out of the Amazon River jungle have been sexually abused as a child. See, the enemy uses that to try to sow the seed of darkness 
that that just that darkness stays with them. But there's healing for that, amen? There's healing for that. And God is our source for the healing. And sometimes we need to get together and talk. We need to talk about it. We need to work through it. And I just want to let you know that we're here to help. Don't, don't go tell somebody, don't go tell one of your friends that's going to tell everybody else. Make an appointment with Elizabeth. Make an appointment with me. Let's do this. Let's not stay captured in this lust of the enemy. Let's be free, amen. How many of you want to just be free? Amen. I'm going to ask you today to stand with me. I'm going to ask you to come to the front. Please, everybody, just come to the front today. I typed out a prayer today. I would like us all to say. Come on. Just come to the front. Come close. Come close. It's going to be on the screen. Let's just say it together today. See, my, my, my objective is I don't want to expose people. It's not my heart to expose you. But if we all do it, and it's something that it's in you, you can find freedom today with all of us here today. Amen? So let's do this together. Ready? Begin. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you today and I surrender to you. I ask that you forgive me for the things I have seen and the things that I have meditated on that are not of you. I want true love in my life and not lust. Help me today to walk in purity so that I may have pure love in my life. You are the source of love and I want to receive from you your love. Take away all from me and fill me overflowing with your strength and help me to put off today all lust and impurity off my life. I thank you today for giving me courage and strength to make a stand against what the enemy has tried to do in my life in Jesus' name, amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand. So Father God, I, I just pray for my friends and family here today, God. That Lord, as we have said this to you today, that you would touch all of our hearts, God that no weapon formed against us would prosper. But by the confession of our mouths today, it'd be broken, be broken. And God, you set us on that path of healing and victory. That the enemy shall not have a hold on us any longer. Lord, not just in this area, but any area that we've been struggling in. You are our God. You are our savior, you are our king, and we love you so much. That's why we're here today. That's why we've said this prayer. Lord, we believe in Jesus. And we thank you that you've sent the Holy Spirit to help each one of us. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you help each one of us. Give each one of us an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying so that we can move forward. We thank you you in Jesus name. Amen. 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 All right. Praise God. Huh? Everybody take a seat, Yolanda said.